Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting for the City of San Juan at 6 p.m. May we rise for invocation? Mr. Ormona, can you lead us, sir? Yes, please bow our heads. Dear Father, as we gather today, we thank you for the blessing you have bestowed upon us. As we start tonight's meeting, we ask for those less fortunate. We ask for your guidance and wisdom as our elected officials make important decisions that will benefit our city. We pray to you in heaven and up above to watch over us. And as always, we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. This is like for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. May be seated. Under public comments at this time. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Arjona. Yes, Mayor, Commissioner, good evening, uh, staff and virtual staff. Um, Mayor, before we start, uh, just to let you know real quick, uh, this week is Police Week. I want to thank the uh, Police Department Chief, your staff, for being out there. I know that this has been a, a crazy few months already, but they're always been out there, and, and I want to thank you for, for that service. Also, on another note, uh, I got a uh, compliment from our neighboring city, from the city of Donna. Uh, complimenting the uh, the fact that our fire department assisted to one of the structural fires, and the uh, gentleman from the city of Donna, Chief Guerrero, called uh, to commend the uh, the staff as a well very well job that they did. So I want to compliment and, and commend the uh, fire department for doing for doing that service this morning. Other than that, uh, under presentations, the, the first part of it we have uh, departmental reports. Tonight we have the Department of Planning and Zoning, Parks and Recreation, the San Juan Memorial Library, and Department of Sanitation. And I believe everybody's here. Should you have any questions? Uh, I guess my first question is to Mr. Patrick Willingham in reference to the, uh, just basically, sir, an update on the uh, municipal parks. Um, how are we going on that? Municipal park is uh, coming along very very well. The south end park is complete. Uh, well, the, in, the inside the ballpark is complete. Turf, the sod, sprinkler system. And on the north side, every, we're about halfway done with the natural grass. Everything else is complete. Okay. Sprinkler system, the turf, and about halfway out to the outfield. And that's a uh, north side? They should take about another, about another three days, three or four days to, to finish up. Uh, laying the sod. At that point, both fields inside the field will be done. And um, of course, right now we're working on uh, the outside now. Um, some of the amenities that will be going on as far as the dugouts, the shading, bleachers, things like that. Oh, the, the batting cages. Batting well. cages. Let uh, me ask you this. Certain, on... uh, some more fencing that we're looking at to keep the park uh, secure. Okay. Um, and as far as the concrete work, too, you concrete guys... work, yes, we've uh, staff has done some minor work taking out some of the old stuff, okay. some of the old concrete. So we'll be replacing it and uh, getting it up to, uh, uh, you know, for ADA purposes, wheelchairs can get around uh, a lot more uh, efficiently and, and safe uh, safety of, of that. Now, as far as the uh, south field, I know I went by there the other day. You know, it was a couple of days ago, and I did notice that the grass out in the outfield, it wasn't, uh, I guess, up to the fence. Now, did they already fill that area, that gap? Oh, yes, okay. all that is done now. Um, there was just a little, uh, a very, very small, by the gate, that they'll do at the last, that's just the last touch they do, right by the gate, just so that any in and out doesn't, they don't stop on it. Uh, until they're ready to leave, and it's a very, very small piece okay, that they leave for the last, for, uh, the last thing they do before they. Also, I know that these uh, we were, we're going to utilize parks for all our our youth sports. You know, your girls and boys, softball, all ages, and some uh, con some concerns that they brought up to me. They would like for us, the city of San Juan, to start up a men's softball league. Maybe we can get together myself and Mr. Arjona, and uh, figure out what would be a good night right. where you can maybe plug in, uh, you know, an evening for the adult playing yes. uh, softball. So 
stuff like that because uh actually we did uh we constructed them with that in mind um the uh the pitching uh anchors for the for the rubbers are and the uh, bases are from the youth all the way to regulation baseball and all softball for right. for women and adults and co-ed so we have all the measurements are included nice so they're, okay. they they were constructed in, with all that in mind that's the only question I have for you, sir. Thank you so much. Any other questions for the directors? If I may? Go ahead, sir. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to refer back to <coughs> Mr. Willingham. Uh, yeah, before then, we used to have a lot of teams in softball, right? Yes. I think there was. play on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, if not mistaken. But uh, like the mayor says, uh, get together with them and we'll see how we can bring them back. No? Absolutely. We'll accommodate. We want to be able to, uh, to grow our adult recreation as well as the youth. Uh, back to Mr. Willingham. Youth sports, right. the pony baseball and softball season, where are we at on that? Right now, so nationally, pony has canceled uh, the season as far as out-of-state tournament. We were just waiting for, what. so what they've done is they reverted back to each state and they were they haven't given us the official as far as what they may or may not have. From what we gather, it's looking like there's not going to be any travel even within the state. And it's going to be kind of thrown back to each local league as far as maybe having something if they wish to have it only locally. So uh, we're just waiting for – we've been going by their official announcements that we, that we put it out. Um, we have been getting requests for um, – refunds and we're processing them now um, just because there are some people that whether we did decide to go forward with something later in the summer or not they still may not be comfortable with it and you know we respect uh, everybody's wishes so if if they uh, will be making a formal announcement though here within a week as what what the plans may be but it's looking like it's going to be left to the local level as far as what they wish to do uh, depending on further information we get from the county but so then right now right now everything is practicing or anything yeah taff and as well as taff which is our summer track and tennis and and uh, those activities that is handled uh, our facilities our school district facilities and right now school district is is shut down and we're in the same situation as pretty much every other city in the valley everybody uses the stadiums and things like that so that looks like that's going to be um until next summer. So, so as, as of now, as the of right now, the is shut down as well. Yes. It's because they're telling me that. Oh, the, the, the parks are, they're, using, the they're using them for practices. So that, that, but that not is, our teams then. Because they're, saying they're not teams local teams, they're renting them. They're renting them. Okay. Yeah, for practice. Correct. But as long as they, they're, what, four or five players? To a group, for, for what we understood, is as long as they're uh, in groups of, of four um, and then spread out as much as not that we have 10 or 12 all in one bunch up there so we haven't had a lot of requests we've had a few oh so a team can practice as long as sure so okay and, yeah, and you're just following contact us on the and schedule we were we're rotating them in, in two hour increments okay. uh, if needed so yes just contact the office and we can accommodate yes sir any other questions? If not, we'll go ahead and move on. Thank you. So under public hearing, uh, the first one we have is hold a public hearing for conditional use permit to allow a social event center, Fiesta Real Event Center, in 905 West 495 Suite 3, legally described as Lot 3, McBride Subdivision, and requested by Ismael Rodriguez. Mr. Escobar. Uh, Mayor Commissioners, this is a conditional permit for an event center. This is located on I Road and 495. It's actually um, an existing uh, plaza, but they're changing the owner, so they had to reply, reapply for the condition use permit. Um, we do have items in your packet. Uh, the applicant, Ismael Rodriguez, we did send, he did submit the application, paid the fee as well, and we also did send the letters within the 200 foot radius. Um, so this is a public hearing, so if I don't know if anybody here is from the public, they can I'll make those, just, those comments. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and open this up at 6 10 p.m. Is there anyone here for or against? for or against on this matter. 
If not, is there any questions for Mr. Robert, uh, members of the commission? I see here that it, yeah, it was a six and oh, six oh, you know. Okay. Any any questions for Mr. Escobar? If not, I'll go ahead and close this at six ten p.m. Is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. The next one is hold a public hearing for a conditional use permit to allow a beauty salon in a residential area located at 1005 Shawnee Circle, legally described as Lot 43, Block 2, Lucero State Subdivision, as requested by Melissa Arguelles. Uh, under our uh, ordinances for the city, uh, condition use permit, uh, you know, they can possibly request apply for uh, to have a beauty salon or a uh, haircut uh, place in a residential area. Uh, there's just certain conditions that they'd have to meet if they were to open up. This is located on Sam Houston Boulevard and Shawnee, Shawnee Circle. Uh, it's a continuous permit for the beauty salon in a residential zone. The applicant is Ms. Melissa Arguelles. They did submit the application. They did pay the fee. Um, we also sent out the advertisement and we also sent out letters within the 200 foot radius uh, to the residents. Uh, we also have photos as well as a zoning map uh, in your packet. It's currently single family residential district. Um, we did receive some letters. Uh, this is a public hearing. Um, we provided them in the packet. So they're not here, but they're in the packet as well. Yeah, those, those emails that were sent in, yeah. stuff like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, let, me open, let me go ahead and open it. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and open this up at 6, 7 p.m. Is there anyone here for or against? I know Miss. Uh, Diana Cavazos has a... Uh, yes, sir. I received uh, an email from Mr. Enrique Moya and his spouse, Monica Moya, op opposing the opening of the operation of the proposed beauty salon. The opening of such an establish establishment would be in violation of the Lucero State Subdivision Building Agreement. Upon this business being approved, others would most likely follow suit. Um, I also received another one from Mr. Greg and Cynthia Nava. Um, who also live in the in the neighborhood, and they they're opposing since it's a residential neighborhood. They're asking for, for the city to follow the guidelines of the neighborhood, not only about a commercial business, but also following the two-car garage in that house that it doesn't have. Thank you. Is is there anyone else or against? No one. Did? Okay. Any questions for Mr. Robert Escobar? Members this of the a, commission. Obviously, I've seen, I've seen uh, Mayor Vicente. Go ahead, sir. I've seen there's a full blown residential area, and I'm familiar with your Sh Shawnee. Uh, yeah. And that's kind of inside inside the residential, correct? It's, it's probably like midway. In. Midway, right? Yeah. Okay. Come okay. at the third or fourth house too, right? Well, what's the deal with the the garage? I uh, well, that's a separate issue, but uh, um, they were just uh, saying that. Those yeah, they were just saying that it, that it didn't meet the I guess the restrictions on the okay. subdivision that the property owner developed on his own. Okay. So that's something that the pro the private property owner develops. It's not any regulations from the city. We can only pretty much it. he did it on his own. Well, he, he applied for a permit, but he's supposed to talk to the subdivision uh, to see if he can get that approved. But that's I know a, that's this a was separate this, issue. this was done uh, way before yeah. our time. Well, it's, a, it's a separate issue. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. This what they're trying to do is get a condition use permit to have that that beauty salon. And one of the conditions was that they'd have uh, not create traffic. But uh, you know, a lot of the letters and uh, in that area, that's one of the main roads that people use to exit. So you know, the the public and we felt that it would probably be a, a traffic issue because you need parking. You know, that's the main road for people to leave. It wouldn't be the the best idea to have some type of business there in that residential. You know, the main uh, the the concern I have as well is that if uh, having something like that in a neighborhood, it's going to just depreciate the other surrounding homes in that area. I'm assuming. Well, just that, you know, people can go and get appointments and park on the street and, you know, they might, but, they might but park But what I'm saying neighbors. is property values, mm -hmm. more likely, you know. And not only that, if the resident decides to sell their house, you know, and knowing that if there was something like that there operating, it, I don't think it... The, na the neighboring uh, property. Okay. And, I, and I hear more on the side of, uh, of hearing out our public and hearing out our, our, our the constituents that live in that area. And it just seems that there's an overwhelming uh, uh, sense of, you know, asking and pleading for the city to do something about this. Yeah, it's because that subdivision, there's two roads to it, but there's three within the subdivision. The third street's yes. a cul-de-sac. So all those people, they can't leave. They, they have to go through Shawnee. 
Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, they get their parking, so it, it creates exactly. more more traffic, and then okay. that's what. And so the planning and zoning. Uh, they recommend denial. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? If I may, yes. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Solas. So it went through the planning and zoning. It was denied. It's coming before us. If we choose to deny it and they continue to operate, because my understanding is they're still operating out of that home, yeah. what actions can we take? We, we'd actually have to take them to court or we can, we can give them a violation and take them to court for doing that. And then the judge can give them a fine. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? If not, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this at 6.15 p.m. 6.15 p.m. So at this time, I'm just going to go ahead and make a motion to deny this request. That's in a motion. Is there a second? It's been second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Mo motion carries. I just want to make a comment before you, you, you um, leave the podium, Mr. Squad. The concern that I have is that I just want to make sure that obviously you we you saw it firsthand that the commission did deny this this matter. I just don't want them to be operating, you know, because uh, it, it, it's happening. I know it's been happening before this item came to this agenda. So I just want to make sure that maybe you can coordinate something with PD or your code enforcement to really, you know. Cruise around the area and make sure that there's no any type of business being run through there. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I still got two more. <laughs> Hold on. Got three more. Um, sir, we, uh, I was hearing uh, Commissioner Villegas about that two-car garage, but that's the subdivision ordinance, right? Yeah, they're, the, the, uh, they're the covenants of the subdivision. It's only for them, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're okay. They come and ask. They can, you can guide them as far as what they Just need to do. If there's a yeah. related, okay. related right to them. All right. Thank you, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Hull. The next item is hold a public hearing for a conditional use permit for a drive through business and for the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premise consumption at Palomo drive through located 901 West, uh, 495 Suite uh, number 2, legally described as Lot 5, my drive subdivision, is requested by Viviana Palomo. So this is a conditional use permit it's for a drive through and the reason they're asking for a conditional use is because uh, it's required through the zoning. Uh, this is located on I-Road and uh, FM-495. There's, there was actually a previous uh, drive-through there, so uh, they want to open that up. So they're applying for that condition use permit. Uh, the applicant is Viviana Palomo. They did submit the application. We did send newspaper advertisements. Uh, we did send the letters within a 200-foot radius. There's also photos in the zoning map. It's currently general business uh, C2. Uh, so this is just part of the process. They have to apply uh, once uh, we do approve this or, or deny it. Uh, we take it, They take it to ABC to apply for their permits for alcohol. So it's just part of that process. So, all right. At this time, I'm going to open this up. Uh, I'll open this up at 6.18 p.m. Is there anyone here for or against? For or against on this matter? Any questions for Mr. Escobar from the members of the commission? Is that the one used to be Morados or something before, right? It's a drive through I believe so. Yeah, they actually have the, the, the door that kind of yeah, goes no, up. Yeah. It's right next to the you plaza. Go the back, yeah, you could drive around so that the cars won't be stacked. They'll on. actually be. Any other questions? Are we good? Okay, I'll close this up at uh, 6 18 p.m. Is there a motion to approve? So approved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Next item hold a public hearing for a conditional use permit to allow multi family dwelling along the expressway corridor district at proper legal described at 15,492 acre tract of land out of the east 20 acres of lot three. Block 35, Alamo Land and Sugar Company subdivision, located approximately a quarter of a mile west of Cesar Chavez Road, along the south side of Sergeant Leonel Trevino. Road is requested by Leonel Cantu. So in, uh, in our zoning ordinance, uh, in the expressway corridor district, the condition of use, uh, they do allow for multifamily. Uh, so that's why they're applying for this. Uh, this is located on west of Cesar Chavez on Sergeant Leonel Trevino. So it's the property east of Fireman's Park. Uh, it's a 15-acre track. Previously, they, they requested to rezone it to single family residential. So uh, this is a condition used to allow for uh, multifamily use in that zone. So this is part of the expressway corridor district. Um, and it's, it's so, okay, go ahead, go ahead. By Leonel Cantu, they did submit the application. We also did send out the newspaper advertisement as well as letters within the 200 foot. So um, I believe this is a zoning map, which will show you it's in the expressway corridor district. 
uh, and it's for a condition use. So they're not changing the zone, they're asking for a condition use permit. So it's, it's a little different, uh, but just what the planning and zoning was looking at, um, there was a San Juan Expressway Corridor study that was done, um, and the intent was to provide, use that property for business development. Um, there's architectural guidelines, there's also more for mixed use, you know, apartments, uh, you know, commercial plazas, things like that, um, you know, master plan development. So it allows for apartments, but within a condition of use, but for a, a master uh, development type project. Um, you know, this is mainly uh, apartments, about 15%. 15% is going to be for commercial, and the rest would be for residential. So it's very limited uh, commercial that they're putting into that, you know, because they're doing a little bit of mixed use. They're asking for a mixed use, but so so right now, uh, as we speak, it's it's zoned. It's a corridor. Co yeah, which yeah. is commercial. Which is commercial, but in in that zone, it allows for condition use for apartments. You know. In this particular. Area. Yes. Okay, let me go ahead and open yes. this up. This time, I'm going to open this up at 6:21 p.m. Is there anyone for or against? For or against? Questions from the members of the commission. The, the, the only thing, go ahead, sir. Yeah, you can. Yes, sir. Just do me a favor and state your name for the record. Yeah, I'm uh, Bobby Bell. Uh, I own a property just uh, east of uh, this piece of property, and I was just wondering, uh, all the traffic will go to the Leonel Trevino side. Is that, I would just, Wondering how that's going to handle 15 acres worth of apartments over there. Uh, it seems to me like it would be a, a, an awful lot of traffic for that little road. Okay. All right. Thank you, Thank you sir. Yeah, so basically the intent of the expressive corridor was to, you know, have larger developments, maybe apartments. Uh, you know, we do, we'd like apartments, but I think the whole intent of that was to for, for commercial, for retail development, so, yeah. Yes, and, and the, the, the only thing, Mr. Escobar, is if we, you know, um, if, if, I, if, you know, the commission does decide to approve something like this, what we're going to do is we're going to set precedents here for the near future. And I know that there's areas along the corridor, you know, I, I think it's brought it up to our attention once, another developer, you know, wanting to build the, some apartments, right? And what what was the outcome on that? Well, I don't recall. Them. No, I believe uh, it was denied. And it was it for the, for this one, the planning and zoning. They also felt that yeah, you know, they didn't want to just have a bunch of apartments start coming in, so that's why they re recommended denial for that. Change, not change the zoning. I think the last time the reason was that they tried to change the zoning, right? This time we're trying to use commercial, the front, and residential on the back. Right across the street, there is a subdivision with housing. So I don't think it's of the, and the revenue is approximately $370,000 a year of, for the taxes for the city when, when it's all developed. And it's a multifamily, uh, fourplex units, and it's gated. It's going to be a nice uh, development. That I used, we did one in Edinburgh as well, and it worked real well on right on Monmouth Street, on Monmouth Road. That was pretty much it. The value of the revenue for the city as well. Thank you, Thank you sir. Pardon me? Go ahead, sir. Uh, Mr. Bob Garza. Mr. Bob. <laughs> Will I come to the mic? Por favor. I know, well, welcome aboard uh, to the EDC. Uh, now that you're on EDC, I know you're a former uh, councilman. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about this area? Uh, you're talking about Sergeant, right? Yes. As a matter of fact, I read, read up on it today. Uh, they did a study uh, in reference to, to that. I, I feel we should uh, just kind of keep it, keep it the way it is for commercial. I mean, there's a beautiful... Beautiful land. I understand the gentleman that came up here and discussed about the taxes. It's great. We need taxes, you know, by all means. But I think the the, the plan is set already. I, I think as a previous city commissioner, I think we even worked on that. So 
I honestly think we should uh, just move forward with it uh, as far as keeping it the way it is. Keeping it as is. Thank and you. That's correct. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank sir. You. I mentioned developers maybe also commercial side, right? Yeah. Coming in and oh, yes, they've looked at it. Um, and, and, you know, the thing is that uh, that's what we have, that corridor, yeah. as far as for commercial development. Yeah. Right. Focus. And, and, and the focus and I, uh, with, the, uh, with the corridor study that, that we uh, – did a couple of years ago that the whole intent of that was that to keep that area as commercial retail versus any type of mixed use and i know that the corridor study does allow that through a conditional use permit however we feel that only because of the limited amount of land that we have on the frontage uh we feel that the, the best for the city should be something like just keep it as retail commercial only yeah and that's just my that's my concern is that you know this would set presence and then we're going to have other developers coming in and wanting to develop, you know, multi-family homes and stuff like that. So, all right, let me go ahead and uh, close this up. Any other questions for Mr. Escobar? Nothing, Mayor. The only thing that, uh, that I have in mind and envision is that a uh, keeper commercial, uh, we've had it like, like that we can attract a big box uh, retail. And if you go back to the expressway, with the exception with the uh, old settlements, if you follow that line of, of uh, commercial all the way from here to Mission, you know, it's basically all commercial. If you, if you build this imaginary line, and that's what I envision, something that is going to connect. It's like uh, I always say, I used to live in Austin, like old 35 used to be very, uh, very uh, rural, and now everything's connected commercially-wise. And that's kind of what I'm envisioning. So that's my, 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 sure. my, my opinion on that. Any other questions or comments? If not, I'm going to close this at 6.27 p.m. This time, uh, I'll go ahead and make a motion to deny. Is there a second? second? It's been second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, sir. The next item, uh, hold public hearing for conditional use permit to allow a food concession stand, pick a pebble snacks with a drive through window at uh, 411 North Raul Longoria Road, legally described as the west 309.24 feet of the south, 140.86 feet of the north, 281.72 feet of the lot 10, block 8, tracks 19 to 20, John Claus from subdivision and requested by Stephanie Villarreal. Uh, this is a condition use permit and it's uh, to allow food concession stand. Uh, it's kind of like a snow cone, some snacks uh, that they're going to be doing uh, in, in, uh, in the trailer. Um, located on Raul Longoria between Nolana and Minnesota, there's actually an existing car dealership uh, there. Uh, that there, you know, There's plenty of room for them to put a, a trailer like that. Um, it's submitted by Stephanie Villarreal. They did submit the application as well as we also sent out the newspaper advertisement as well as sent letters within 200 foot radius. So it's currently zoned general business C2. Uh, just some of the conditions that we'd ask for the trailer is that it'd be anchored properly. Uh, that they'd, they'd skirt the bottom so that, you know, it, it looks a lot cleaner. Uh, restrooms available. They'd also have to comply with the health permits and the occupational uh, permit as well. And then every year uh, they'd have to renew the condition use permit. So as long as they meet those conditions, uh, the city, well, the staff, we have a problem with that, and uh, also the planning and zoning they did approve. As well. This time, I'm going to go ahead and open this up at 6:28 p.m. Is there anyone here for or against? For or against? Any questions for Mr. Escobar in reference to this matter? Um, There was unanimous, and you mentioned it's yearly. They got a yeah, they have to. Yeah. Okay, okay. Any other questions for Mr. Escobar? Not. I'll close this at 6:29 p.m. Is there a motion approved? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, sir. The next item mm -hmm. under ordinances, we have consider adoption of an ordinance in the first reading to amend the City of San Juan Code of Ordinances. Chapter 13, Utilities, Article 13.03, Water and Sewer Service Division, to Rates, Charges, and Billing, Part 4, Sewer Rates and Charges, adding Section 13.03.185, Sewer Maintenance Service Line Televising Fee, Establishing Sewer Maintenance Service Line televi Televising Services, Establishing the Rate to be Charged by the City of San Juan, Providing for a Repealer Clause, Providing for Codification, and Providing for Publication and an Effective Date. Mr. Salinas. 
Uh, good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Uh, a few years ago, the City Commission adopted a ordinance that allowed the City to charge a small fee to clean out service lines for the customers as a way to help the customers uh, be able to maintain their, their lines. One of the things that's come about from that, that, uh, that ordinance is that when we do go out there to, to service the lines and we do encounter like mud and roots, they ask us to televise it. And the camera that we have, it is a very good tool. We've done it for, for several people, but we don't have a mechanism for charging and we tend to uh, have to do more maintenance on our cameras. So this fee will allow us to cover that maintenance. The other thing we've also been using it for is to locate the stub outs for some of the older existing subdivisions that don't have them marked. So this will allow for us to cover some of the fees that we're, we're expending when we send a crew out to the field for one to two hours to, to televise and locate those, those stub outs for some of these, these lots. So I'm asking for your authorization to uh, amend the existing ordinance, uh, get it codified to, to be able to charge a fee, which is the first time service fee of $250, and that'll include 50 feet of line, which is about the average size of a service line for a house from the house to our main. And then anything after that will be at a $5 per foot. There is a typo in the ordinance. I just saw it right now. Of course, this is a first reading. It still needs to come back to you all for second reading, uh, for final approval. Uh, and basically, that, that's the reason why it's amend the ordinance. Any questions, Mr. Salinas? How many calls do we get a day about this? More or less. I mean, I mean not a day, I'm saying in a month. Well, this, this one, right now, we've been getting a lot because there's been a lot of people at home. And problems that we have is the flushable wipes uh, and and the grease that people are using. They're, pe they're preparing more meals at home now. So the grease and the flushable wipes, they end up being clogging the line. And some of the older sections of the town like that here, we still have a lot of clay line. So a lot of that clay line, and we have a lot of old growth trees that have a lot of uh, roots. So uh, we tend to get a lot right now. Uh, it, they have gone down from the, from the first uh, 30 days that we were in this quarantine. Uh, we we're down to, we got two today, and we were getting an average about eight a day. So now we're down to two today, so which is good. Uh, we've been working the jet machine out really. In fact, we, before I left, they called in another one about 4.30. So the guys are probably still out there right now working on that. We're, we're charging $250 for 50 feet, correct? Yes. So your proposal is five dollars, five five dollars additional feet per feet. Yes, per feet, so and that's where the typo is at. It says two hundred and fifty, and it's after the five fifty foot. Yeah. So after two fifty. After fifty more, feet. After fifty feet, any feet after that is five dollars, which is, which is about the average cost for camera service. In fact, uh, the quote that we got to televise Citrus, if you all remember Citrus, that was about five dollars per foot. So, so that's that's. That that's was my average. question. How how do you get? How did you come up with the number? Yeah, we, 250. The 250 is is uh, is about the average is service charge. Standard? Yeah, it's a standard service charge that they charge if you want to televise your your sewer line. That's the that's the average charge. Plus, we also included the wear and tear of the machine for the maintenance, uh, the crews that go out there along with the equipment uh, that goes out there, the trucks. So all those costs were were taken into consideration. All right. Any questions for Mr. Salinas? Is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, sir. The first item, item on the appointment, we have considered the removal and or appointment of board member members to the San Juan Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Is there a William Hanna? Good evening, uh, Mayor Commissioner. Good evening. Uh, last month, or late last month, we had a uh, a resignation by Mr. Moy Valsaldua, uh, resigning his position on the uh, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Uh, he's, he's on another board, so he didn't want to overextend himself too much. Uh, since then, as well, I received a second email uh, resignation from another Parks uh, and Rec uh, Advisory Board member, uh, board member, excuse me, uh, Mr. Uh, Ralph Quintanilla, as well. Uh, work conflict and couldn't didn't have the time anymore. Um, before you, I believe you have the two applications yeah. that uh, 
have been submitted. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and uh, I noticed that that in our in our file or we only have two. So with that being said, I'll just go ahead and make a motion to appoint R.C. Flores and uh, Aaron Gonzalez. Second. It's been second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The next item is consider the removal and or appointment of board members of the San Juan Economic Development Corporation. Remember, we have one resignation from the EDC board as uh, Mr. Bob Sox is no longer a member, so we only have one. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay. Um, the Economic Development Corporation has a board of directors in which consists of seven directors who are appointed for two year terms of office. Um, three of the directors shall be persons who are not employees of the governing body of the eligible city, as per Section 4 BC of the Act of 1979. Um, so at this point, I, I provided you with a list of the current members. Um, I didn't put any applications along with this because we did not receive any. Um, I also went through the applications that we have on file, and they are all expired. Um, we have not received any new applications for the ABC board. So I guess, uh, go ahead, Mr. Robert. I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, Mr. Robert Loredo in, a, in that open space. That Thank you. Got second. It's been second by Coach Neto Guajardo. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion Thank you. Carries. Thank you, ma'am. The next item on the discussion of possible action, we have considered the approval of a budget amendment in the amount of $39,108 out of miscellaneous grant fund balance to the police department miscellaneous grant budget. Chief? Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, Mayor. Good evening. Commission. Sure. Uh, this is a, um, an amendment that we're doing because of the grant that we received for 39108 on the COVID-19. So uh, we also attached a resolution, and this is uh, items that we're going to be purchasing for, uh, law, for first responders to include the fire department as well. So this is for PD and fire? This is, yeah, yes, sir. PD and fire, yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, because here it just states, uh, okay, I got you. Yeah, we were the, uh, through the Hollis and Rollins, we were the uh, oh, okay. grantees, the right. ones that we submitted Sounds the grant. Good. Yes. Any questions for Chief Gonzalez? If not, is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? All favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, sir. The next item, consider the approval budget adjustment in the amount of 34000 240 out of the federal forfeiture fund balance to the police department federal forfeiture budget. Please. Yes, uh, Mayor Commission, this is also a uh, budget for allocating some um, funds so we can cover overtime from asset forfeiture to uh, to our regular uh, uh, patrol services, uh, uniform services. So uh, this is strictly for patrol uniform services. Um, Chief, yes. is that money? That was where you're going to allocate for overtime money. So is that that we use? Are we going to uh, cover some uh, overtime, or is to get overtime? No, to get overtime. We uh, we were budgeted ninety thousand dollars this past year uh, on the, for our budget, and we depleted that. So this is to uh, cover the rest of the uh, months until until the end of the year, this fiscal year. And, and just to give you a little bit of numbers, uh, the ninety thousand. Were covered through a patrol, uh, 1148 hours for patrol, uh, 373 for CID, and 196 for dispatch, jailers, evidence techs, and other. So the majority of overtime is all uniform services for patrol. Are we, or do we have funding from uh, Border Star or Stone Garden? At this yes, point? yes, uh, Member Taylor, and those are two separate, the Border Star and Stone Garden, those are two separate uh, right. uh, 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 grants plus a traffic grant that. Uh, you know, officers are working in detail on that. So those are additional money. So yes, additional money. For that's operational for a city uh, that's not covered through the board. Mm -hmm. That is correct, Mayor. Yeah. So basically, it's for staffing on patrol, right. for calls for service, for uh, officers staying over, writing reports, uh, officers covering shift for persons on sick leave, annual leave, camp time, workman camp, and so forth. So. Any other questions? If not, motion approved. Is there a second? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next item, a uh, discussion and possible election regarding Hidalgo County Elections Department request for early voting election day, polling locations of fire station number 2, 2301 Raul Longoria, San Juan, Texas, 7589 for the 2020 primary runoff. 
In the past, the County of Hidalgo Elections Department has reached the City of San Juan requesting the San Juan Fire Station Number 2 for elections. This year, they're requesting the facility for the early voting and election day of the 2020 primary runoffs. Um, in your packet, you have the dates that they are requesting. Um, they have early voting from July 6th through July 10th with election day of July 14th. But they reached out to me this morning because um, there were some changes yesterday um, with one of the orders from the governor. So now they want the early voting from June 29th through July 10th. Hold from on, hold, hold on. June 29th? Yes. Through July 10th? Yes. And times are still the same? 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. July 10th. Okay. And the election day is going to remain the same. Um, July 14th is the date for that one. That's election day? Yes. And this is for the primary. Okay. Now, you know, uh, I don't know if you can maybe answer this, Diana, but you know how there's been talk as far as in the state uh, and maybe even the federal government as far as having, uh, I've been hearing that there's a possibility or they may look into mail-in ballots, you know, for everyone. And then I've heard, no, only mail-in ballots for 65 years and older. So with us proving this, obviously it's for the, the, the voter to go in and actually cast a vote at this particular location. Correct. But um, like they told me from the Hidalgo County, I mean, things are changing every day. So, so for now, this is what they provide it. But it could not, it's point. not concrete, pretty much what you're saying. Correct. Okay, yeah, yes. no, no, that's fine. Yes. We'll just have to come back in. And, and, okay, I got you. Any questions for Ms. Diana? If not, is there a motion approved? Is there a second? Uh, go ahead, sir. Quick. I don't know if the motion has to include the new dates, uh, legal. The new dates. The new dates. The motion has to include the, uh, the new dates. Or as recommended by the city secretary, I, I, would, I would do that. Okay. As, as recommended by city, city staff. Which is? Uh, June the 29th to July 10th. Okay. And yeah. also all the days will be July 14th. Correct. So That's your motion? That's my motion. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Viegas. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on the contractual, we have considered authorizing city manager to extend the contract for the city of San Juan project manager with Strata Engineering in consulting LLC for the transit terminal building city hall pursuant to RFQ 18-64-03-20. This is just a renewal contract mayor. Commissioners as the other one. This is just one year and then we're extending it another year. So I know I know in reference to the project manager right now, the ball's going in reference in the city hall. Yes, sir. You know, everything's pretty much green and light. Right, as a matter of fact, uh, the next meeting we should be bringing the uh, architecture yes. already. Uh, and making a de determination as to who you, you are going to be choosing. So when's the closing date for them to submit their bids? Is it today? If I'm not mistaken, I, I think it might be the day or tomorrow. No, you, you don't need to go No? It's any time soon now. That's fine, that's Because fine. it'll be Wednesday, uh, maybe next week or this week. Well, I'll, I'll check, but it's, it's either so, this week or next week. So let me ask you this. So for our next meeting, we'll have the, the yeah, the come in and just present, right. and then the commission decides. Right. Correct. All right. Any questions for Mr. Arjona? If not, is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? second? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. The next item, consider authorizing the city of San Juan on the resolutions to, to apply and submit a grant application for funding to the Office of the Governor for the City of San Juan COVID-19 Response Program, fiscal year 2020. Chief. Yeah, this is uh, a reference to item A that I just mentioned. Yes. Same, same grant. Same. Yes, sir. With that being said, is there a motion to approve? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Under consent agenda, we have uh, item A and B. Should you like to discuss further, we can pull any, any items out of that. At this time, is there anything we need to modify or amend under consent agenda? If not, is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Under executive session, we have the San Juan City Commission will convene executive session according with the Texas Open Meetings Act. 
Vernon's Texas Statute, St. Paul's Administrative Government Code, Chapter 551. So now we have uh, item one, two, and three. Okay. At this time, uh, City Commission will go into executive session. Is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We will be going in executive session at 6.45 p.m. We're back uh, from executive session at 7.21 p.m. Is there a motion to reconvene? Oh. Is there a second? second? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Yeah. Under executive yeah. session, under executive session one, at this time we're going to take no action. No action. Under executive session two, I'll go ahead and make a motion to negotiate into agreement with promoter discussed in executive session. That's in the motion. Is there a second? Second. Been second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Under executive session three, um, I'll go ahead and make a motion to negotiate and enter an agreement with parameters with provision discussed in executive session. That is in a motion. Is there a second? Okay. There's been second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Yes. This meeting has been adjourned at 7.22 p.m. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Uh